the king must be naked. In a kingdom adorned with emerald landscapes and golden sands, where rivers danced under the sun's watchful eye, there lived a king named Aid. His reign brought prosperity and peace, yet as the years passed, his heart grew fond of grandeur, especially in the clothes he wore. He believed his attire should mirror his unmatched status, thus began his quest for extravagant fashion. Amid his kingdom lived Amina, a weaver of humble origin whose hands spun the tales of tradition into her fabrics. Known for her wisdom and kindness, she watched as the king's obsession grew, fearing it would lead his people into despair. As King Aid's demands for more lavish and expensive garments increased, the kingdom's resources began to strain, diverting essentials from the people to the king's wardrobe. It was then Amina knew something had to be done to open the king's eyes to his vanity and its impact on his people. As the king's desire for more extravagant attire grew, he issued a decree that no garment other than those deemed worthy of his royal person should be crafted within the kingdom's bounds. The weavers and tailors, skilled in their traditional arts, found themselves cornered into a life of producing nothing but lavish clothes for one man, while the vibrancy of the people's attire faded into memory. Among the whispers of dissent and concern, Amina pondered deeply on the path her beloved king had taken. It was clear that King Aid, blinded by his own vanity, had lost sight of what truly mattered, the well-being and harmony of his people. Determined to restore balance, Amina conceived a plan so daring it could either change the course of the kingdom or lead to her downfall. Amina approached the royal court with a proposition for the king. She spoke of a fabric so exquisite, so refined, that it could only be seen by those of the purest virtue and wisest minds. Such a garment, she claimed, would befit only the greatest of monarchs, a true reflection of their inner worth and grandeur. King Aid, intrigued and flattered, could not resist the temptation of displaying such unparalleled magnificence to his people and promptly commissioned Amina to weave this magical garment. For days and nights, Amina toiled away in her humble abode, her loom silent, her needles still. Word of her endeavor spread throughout the kingdom, igniting curiosity and speculation among the populace. Meanwhile, King Aid awaited with growing anticipation, his thoughts consumed by visions of his subjects' awe and admiration. The day arrived when Amina was to present the king with his new attire. Before the court and its high officials, she unveiled nothing. With solemn dignity, she explained that only those truly worthy could see the splendor of the garment. To admit otherwise would be to confess one's own unworthiness or lack of understanding. King Aid, standing before Amina, saw nothing but the air between them. Yet the fear of appearing unworthy or foolish before his court led him to exclaim in delight at the beauty of the garment only he could supposedly see. The courtiers, following their king's lead, praised the invisible fabric, each lauding its brilliance more fervently than the last, none daring to admit the truth. As preparations for the grand parade began, Amina's heart weighed heavy with the knowledge of what was to come. She had hoped her actions would open the king's eyes, but the depth of his vanity and the fear it inspired in others had surpassed her darkest fears. Yet, the seed of truth she planted was about to sprout in the most unexpected of ways. The kingdom buzzed with excitement on the day of the parade. From the youngest child to the eldest elder, everyone gathered to witness their king's magnificence. Cloaked in nothing but his unwavering pride, King Aid stepped out to greet his people, believing himself adorned in the finest garment ever made. As the parade commenced, a hushed silence fell over the crowd. Eyes wide with disbelief yet mouth sealed by fear, the people exchanged bewildered glances. The king's advisers, draped in their own finery, walked with heads held high, oblivious to the murmurs of confusion spreading like wildfire. The scene was set, the pieces in motion. As King Aid paraded before his subjects in his invisible attire, the kingdom stood on the brink of a revelation that would forever alter its course. Little did the king know, his greatest lesson was about to be taught not by his advisers, his courtiers or the wisest of his subjects, but by the innocent voice of a child. This turning point in our tale will unveil the fragile nature of truth and the strength it takes to voice it amidst silence. 
On that sun-drenched afternoon, as the parade weaved through the streets of the kingdom, the air was thick with an unspoken question. The king's subjects, from the sprawling marketplaces to the dusty alleyways, stood in a silence that bordered on reverence and disbelief. Children perched on their parents' shoulders for a better view, their eyes wide with curiosity at the spectacle before them. It was then, amidst the sea of hushed tones and stifled gasps, a clear, innocent voice pierced through the veneer of pretense. A young boy, no older than seven, his eyes unclouded by the fears and expectations that weighted down the adults around him, shouted, The king must be naked! The simplicity and honesty of the child's observation echoed like a thunderclap across the square. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as the crowd absorbed the truth of the boy's words. A ripple of realization spread through the assembly, as if the child's innocence had granted them permission to trust their own eyes. Laughter broke out, at first hesitant, but growing in confidence and volume. The laughter was not mocking. It carried a relief, a release from the bonds of an unspoken conspiracy. The king, still parading with the dignity he believed his regal garb afforded him, paused. Confusion and then horror dawned on his face as the reality of his situation became apparent. He was indeed naked, exposed not only in body but in his folly. The advisers and courtiers, those architects of flattery and deceit, found themselves equally laid bare, their pretensions to wisdom and virtue unraveled by the simple truth of a child's observation. In that moment of collective awakening, the spell of the king's vanity was broken. Yet, amidst the crowd's burgeoning laughter and whispers, there stood Amina, her expression one of compassion rather than triumph. She had not sought to humiliate the king, but to open his eyes to the truth that true leadership and respect are not built on outward appearances, but on wisdom, humility, and the genuine love for one's people. As the king hurried back to the palace, shielded by his guards from the eyes of his subjects, a profound silence fell over him. The echoes of the child's words, the king must be naked, reverberated through the halls of his mind, stripping away layers of vanity and pride, leaving him with the raw, uncomfortable truth of his own vulnerability. In the solitude of his chambers, King Aid faced the most challenging confrontation of his reign, the confrontation with himself. The events of the day, while initially mortifying, sparked a period of deep reflection. He recognized Amina's courage in weaving the invisible garment, a metaphorical mirror reflecting his own failings and the collective blindness of his court. In the days that followed, a transformation occurred within King Aid. He sought out Amina, not with intentions of reprimand, but for guidance. Amina, with her innate wisdom, spoke of the responsibilities of leadership, the strength found in humility, and the true wealth of a ruler, the love and respect of his people. The king's public apology to his subjects marked the dawn of a new era for the kingdom. It was an unprecedented act of humility from a monarch, admitting his faults and vowing to lead with wisdom and a heart open to the needs and well-being of his people. This act endeared him even more to his subjects, who saw in him not a figure of unattainable perfection, but a human being capable of growth and change. King Aid redirected the kingdom's resources towards the prosperity of his people, investing in agriculture, education and the arts. The weavers and tailors, once consigned to producing garments of vanity, now flourished as their crafts celebrated the rich tapestry of the kingdom's culture, moral lessons from the folktale story. The king must be naked is more than a tale of vanity and folly. It is a parable for our times, emphasizing the enduring values of humility, truth, and wise leadership. It teaches us that, one, vanity and pride can blind us to our own vulnerabilities and to the needs of those we lead. King Aid's obsession with his appearance served as a barrier to his connection with his people and his understanding of his role as their steward. Two, truth often comes from the most unexpected places. The innocence of a child shattered the illusions upheld by adults, reminding us that honesty and wisdom are not solely the province of the experienced or the powerful. 3. Humility is the hallmark of true leadership. King Aid's willingness to admit his mistakes and learn from them transformed his rule and deepened his connection with his subjects. 4. The strength of a community lies in its unity and the shared values of its people. 
Amina's courage to challenge the king and the people's eventual embrace of the truth brought about a stronger, more cohesive kingdom. In closing, the kingdom found greater prosperity and harmony under King Aid's renewed leadership, guided by the principles of humility and service. Amina's legacy, embodied in the tale of the invisible garment, lived on as a reminder of the importance of seeing beyond the superficial, valuing the truth, and leading with wisdom and compassion. Thus ends our tale. The King Must Be Naked, a story woven from the threads of human nature, teaching us that the most profound truths and the most powerful changes often come from the simplest of observations and the courage to act upon them. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share for more captivating folktale stories. See you in the next story.